Too late. Weird, now. I can see you again now. How are you all, guys? Good. Oh, good. good. Oh, yeah. Good. I think we are. Nice to be here like, finally. Run roll for that. Yeah. We're finally on air now. Since last week, you're waiting for this. Man. We yeah, we well, it's been a long time. <laughs> Well, I wasn't laughing last week, trust me. I thought it, it was all over. I half expected you to turn around on Monday and say, we'll leave it now, thank you, Ian. Try again another yeah. time. Well, they, <laughs> yeah. they, all, they all did, but I kind of bribed them and said, no, we can't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, they thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Ian, you we're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're locked down, mate. <laughs> we're not you always say if anyone can, anyone can change a schedule, it's two jokes. Yeah, this is true. I had a sports day to get to, so you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's lovely to have you all here, and it's absolute delight, yeah. and I wanted to start off with a question to take you back right to the very beginning of your Brookside time, so it's going to really pick your brains here, so... Shouldn't take how, long. <laughs> <laughs> how did the part come about, what had led up to it, and it's kind of a two-part question, can you recall your very first scene? Don't all answer at once. I'll come to you, Michael, first. You should know, because I... Oh, oh thanks. Not so long ago, just so that should help you. <laughs> oh, I, I, sorry, I didn't catch up. What was that? Um, I'm stalling, so I can remember. But the, <laughs> Your um, very first scene. My very first scene was on the close, of course, and I went to... Um, oh, my very first... No, actually, yeah, I, I pinched a ladder from Barry Grant. I had a, a, I was running bets for Harry Cross's wife, Edna, lovely Betty yes. Alberge, and um, she was putting bets on in secrets. I was running them for her, and I came to the house, gave her a bet and money, and I was having a cup of tea, and then I saw Barry Grant's ladder that he was using for something, and um, I thought, that'll come in handy for my little business, and I made off with it. So I was supposed to be in for two episodes, uh, and, it, it, you know, it went from there. So. Uh, from a recurring character to obviously, yeah, a regular character by the early nineties. Yeah. So. Well, the 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 regular heartthrob. He was a regular heartthrob. <laughs> well, he had a, quite a lot of girls, girlfriends, didn't he? Didn't he over his time? Marcia, <laughs> Mandy. I left a lot. I left a lot of them crying and heartbroken. <laughs> I know, weeping, <laughs> weeping in misery, <laughs> like myself. <laughs> Can we come to you then, Sue? Can you recall your very first scene? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, because Jackie came in, um, again, like Mickey, for two episodes. I only came in for two episodes. And it was to say to Jimmy, uh, played by Dean Sullivan, of course, um, never darken my doors again. Uh, you know, that's it. Never want to see hear, you again. That was, my, that, well. that was my story, really, to say, you know, don't come to... Uh, to the, to a wedding and uh, and just never be in my life again. And wasn't I wasn't I behind the door when you did that? I, I was behind the door, wasn't I? Were you hiding behind the door? I think. Was yeah, that, when you... Why? Just because you wanted to do that, or were you in the scene? <laughs> were you <laughs> just, I just, just want to hang door. around? Because I, I, I was saying, "Oh, hey, Gloria from Coronation Street's coming." Yeah, that's it. You just <laughs> were a fan. So he was my stalker. That's why he was behind the door. No, sorry. Anyway, so I went in. <laughs> to say, you know, never darken my doors again. And and that was it for me. It was meant to be two episodes. And, you know, the, then the powers that be, whoever they were at the time, um, I, think it was, I think it was Mal, it was Mal <laughs> Young, was it? <laughs> and, and to, um, saw something between, you know, the two characters. And there was a little spark, apparently, and said... Oh, there was. It was magical chemistry between you and Dean oh, Sullivan. Thank you. Sure. That check arrive in time, then, for you to say <laughs> those things. And, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, suddenly I had a phone call to say, you know, would I come back? And um, and then, as, as can only happen in soap, suddenly she was saying to Jimmy, well, you may be able to darken my door again, and, and so on and so forth. And we, we sort of slowly got back together. But yeah. I remember being very daunted on the first day because, um, you know, I think when you go into anything new, yes. for actors, we're always, it's always new kid on the block. So however, whatever you've done before, Doesn't on count. the first day, and you're with all of those people that you've been watching, playing all those 
parts and you don't you mustn't call them by the character name yeah you know? and, and I, I just I don't believe anybody who says you know that when they go into something that they're not really nervous and, and I think it is quite nerve-wracking you know mm. the first time yeah. so I remember that yeah <laughs> and so and then you were there for 10 years so two Eleven. episodes to 10 Eleven. years 11 years. It was 11 years, years, sorry, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. yeah, so, so actually, yeah, from that, you know, it, it was, it was a really exciting uh, development of those, of those two people and their relationship. Yeah, it was great. And the start of some great storylines as well. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Jackie was. was quite, com Jackie and Jimmy, they were quite comical in the early days, weren't they? Yeah, it's so weird you say that because we did we get we got a lot of comedy in in the beginning mm. and then it shifted and got a lot darker really you know and obviously I think people remember that if I had to say what was one of my favourite times it would be all that drug storyline which you know I really mm. didn't truly know anything about drugs and that was really useful because nor did mm. Jackie and and so my discovery of it was aligned to her horror as well yeah. um, and and that went on in real time that was the great thing about Brookside we didn't that he wasn't a drug addict one minute and then three weeks later he was fine again no it we, went on for quite a long time in didn't real it? time with with the real uh trauma and devastation that that would cause and then of course the son as well you know little jimmy oh little jimmy um, yeah so it, it, it was a really special time actually that period because it was totally new you know and uh, and, and and really innovative i think of oh, absolutely like, to do that kind of storyline as well yeah. you know. absolutely innovative yeah thanks sue be back again um lewis can you hear me, Lewis? Yeah. Oh, hi, Lewis. Good evening, Mother. Oh, you can hear me, Mother. <laughs> Lewis, I know that you started off back in, was it 1989, as Harry Cross's lodger? So I'm well, glad... Before that, before that, I went in, it was in the storyline, um, Terry Sullivan was um, was struggling for work and he was on the taxis, but things, he had problems with the license or something like that. And he used to go to a place called Dawson's to get some um, part-time driving work. He used to do deliveries or funerals or whatever like that. So the episode I came in, I was um, I was one of the drivers, and we had to go and collect a dead body from a house. I knew there was a dead body there, but Terry thought it was picking up furniture. <laughs> so that was that was the guy. And uh, we get there, Terry. and I, I, on the way there, I said to him, "Look, I'm going to bookies. I'll, I'll catch up with you later." There's the address. You go. He goes in, knocks on the door, and he says, "There, uh, I've come to see. I've come for Arthur." And she says, "Yeah, he's upstairs in the bedroom." He goes up and looks at. He says, "He's dead." She says, "I know. He's been lying there. He's just reading the Echo, and then he pops up." That was the <laughs> thing. So that was my first. Um, and like like yeah, she yeah. said, it was well. The, the guys they were in for one, two episodes. I was just in for the one, like, and um, and then twelve years later, the rest is history. Then, 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 then I moved in with Harry Cross, <laughs> and uh, that's a great time. Good, 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 good. See, you know, when I, Harry Cross used to frighten the life out of me when I was, because I was only very small when Harry Cross was in it in the 80s. Um, and I mean, he just used to frighten us. Of course, now, I mean, obviously, I just look at him and I just think he's absolutely brilliant and funny. <laughs> now, but back at the time, and I used Mickey, to. Do you remember, really do you remember the, little, uh, the, the little shop at the top of the road when you went out to close and turned right? And there was a little, a little shop oh, yeah. at the top there. Yeah. And he used to send me, say, I've gone, go and get me some CDs, will you? And so I just have to walk up and get my back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't dare say no, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Dan's a character. Yeah, he's, he's a legend, man. He was great. On yeah. and off screen. Very. Okay. We'll move on to John, because I'm sure with John, yours is a two-part question, really, because um, before Billy, you were <laughs> Mr... Well, we called him. they called him Sweeney Todd. The teacher, yeah. very early episodes, actually. They were. It was about two years before I was cast as Billy. I was mm. uh, I was doing the, the reps, you know, I was going between, a, you know, the Everyman and Chester Gateway and all those. And uh, I got a part to play for two episodes, again, uh, to play Sweeney Todd, which was Damien's teacher. And um, then they, they extended it and they'd call me in every now and again. And uh, so I played like Mr. Todd. So I thought, that's it. I'll never get another part on Brookside once uh, he'd left school. 
uh, there was no more scenes at the school. So I thought that's it. And two years later, I was doing bouncers at the, uh, at the Liverpool Everyman. Mm. And uh, I was doing a play, which I hated, really. It was called You'll Never Walk Alone. But we renamed it You'll Never Work Again. It was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remember, then, remember it well. Boy. You do, yeah. You can remember it well, Michael. <laughs> and Bob Cole, I hated it as well. Bob, 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 Bob oh, Carlton, I meant to it, and it was great. It was Bob Carton, God bless him, who's passed away since. Yeah. Uh, I was going to leave after two weeks of this play because I couldn't stand it anymore. And as Chris Clough was co-directing it with him, who was at Brookside at the time. Mm. And uh, they said, look, John, if you stay, we'll see you right. We'll do something. We'll help you out some way. We, you know, we'll get you another job somewhere else. I said, okay, I'll stay. Anyway, yeah. I thought that was all talk. So a few, a few, a month later or something, uh, Bob Carlton said, I've just started at Brookside. They're looking for the new family called the Corkills. Would you be interested? I went, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I played Sweeney Todd. So I don't think they'll let me in. So because uh, because uh, Sweeney Todd was quite a posh Liverpoolian, I thought, silly, yes. I thought I thought I better go in a bit scally like, you know. So I went in, so I like that, and it to uh, <laughs> Phil Redmond, and, and I was going, "All right, mate, how are you?" And all that, and giving it loads and all this, and I thought, oh, "Now this this bloke's a real scally," you know what I mean? He's kicking off, but I didn't think I'd get the part because. Uh, they brought in like different uh, wives each time, you know, to test you with. And I thought, well, oh, they're going to get rid of me soon. And anyway, me and uh, Kate Fitzgerald, the wonderful Kate Fitzgerald, got on really well. Anyway, we got the part. And getting back to your original question is we uh, drove into the close as there was a funeral. That wonderful uh, story yeah. of the nurses. And I think one of Billy's lines, one of my very first lines was, oh, that's a great omen, isn't it? Eh? There's a bloody funeral on the day we will move in. That's great. Isn't it? <laughs> and it was like, you know, and it was, it was, it was, it was a wonderful place to work. All these lovely actors you got to work with, you know, you had a laugh, you learned so much in front of a camera. It was, it was the, it was a boss place. It was a dream come true, really. Yeah, and I loved Kate that. Fitzgerald, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah lovely Kate. Great Fitzgerald. actress. Great. It's really great scenes that you and her did, but we'll talk a little bit about those as we go along, because I've got those. Um, so, well, I'm going to ask, it's a general question, because I imagine there are obviously going to be plenty, because you were all there for so long, but what scenes that stand out in your mind? Obviously, you can pick more than one. I'm going to come to you first, Michael. Oh, to, um too many really um yeah. they were talking about favorite scenes i think <clears throat> probably talking about scenes that had the most dramatic effect or or changed your character the most which is probably in the um the body under the patio storyline which, which we all was, remember was, yeah. was amazing yeah. you know? um and i was brought into that because it, to save it from being a sort of satellite um storyline you know to, to link it with the close rather than these people just coming in and staying in the safe house and nobody around knowing about it but anyway but um there was one particular scene where um Simba had um volunteered because he knew what was going on and and um he kind of become very friendly with the family and he felt very sorry for them and he knew the situation anyway the, the uh, what had happened was the body was buried Trevor's body was in the garden and um, they thought we're in the clear, but as in all soaps, you know, no one gets away with it. You know, there's got, got to be a reckoning. Yeah. So, of course, um, his sister turns up and says, well, you know, you've, you've must have the ring that he had. It's a family heirloom, which was promised to me. And it, oh, dear. <laughs> that's that's on the body. So the body had to come up. And what had happened was they, they'd identified a, a vagrant who'd been floating in the Mersey for some time. And so that's... So, you know, he was buried in the funeral, as well. So um, that was, oh, uh, they thought they were in the clear. Yeah. So um, Brenner turned up his sister. So um, they had to she get the body. Well. <laughs> yeah, she was. The, I think it ran in the family, the Jordache <laughs> family, but she was wonderful. And um, so uh, Simba volunteered to dig the body. But what was amazing, the whole scene was about six or seven minutes long. We rehearsed all day. And being Brookie, you know, night scenes um, in the middle of summer, it didn't go dark till about 11 o'clock. So we had to wait. And then um, we had no dialogue. It was just myself and Anna Friel. Yes. And what happened was I'm digging away. 
get to the, the body and then have this breakdown, just literally breakdown. And um, then Anna Friel comes in and goes to take the spade from him and gives him the strength. And she was amazing. She really was amazing, that kid. Mm. And um, so we... Is we she's not done that, much it? since, has she? No, not well, well, that, was, it, that, that was that. It was the height of her career, wasn't it? Then she got lost, Julie. Yeah. Well, we went through it anyway. We got a lovely uh, director called Jeremy Summers who directed everything, and, and he said to me, "Look, we'll have three cameras on this. You, you can go right from the beginning to the end. Um, you'll see none of the crew. Um, Vinnie Maddox, great lad, was was uh, our floor manager at the time. So none of the crew. We can do it. We can go. So I thought, great, everything sorted out. I thought. Well, what if I don't cry? Because, you know, we all, you know, everyone thinks being able to cry is one of the great, you know, dramatic feats, but it's not, you know, and then, you know, you rehearse it and then you, you dry up. So uh, Dave Jones, who was our makeup lad at the time, said, don't worry, I'll give you some bath to stick. Oh, what's that? Said, well, it's a stick of menthol, put it on your finger. And then when you get to the point where you think you've got to cry, so, you, know, if, you know, if you can act. So I said, oh, great. I said, well, do us a favour, put a load on. Because, you know... I'm digging away and it might rub off and, you know, anyway. So anyway, when it comes to the moment, we're digging away, it gets to the body and the tears just came. I, it was just one of them wonderful moments that you yeah. know, to say you're in the zone. It was, you know, one of those times. And then Anna Friel comes out and I can just see a shadow go over the grave and she comes in. And she goes out of beautiful big blue eyes and, and full of tears. And I nearly went to her, but she did something that we hadn't even rehearsed. So I was like, I got the strength to carry on digging. As I let down, she, she put a hand on my head and I went again. It was just one of those unrehearsed moments. Yeah. You know, and we carried on digging. Five more, six seconds, cut, and we all jumped in the air. Oh, great, one take. And I went, oh, thank God for that. I go, ah! <laughs> I rubbed all this. Oh, no. <laughs> all this stuff into me. I, I burned my eyes and I couldn't drive home. And, and, I, and it was, I, uh, <laughs> so I was like, ah! <laughs> and, uh, and I was saying, Mickey, you're all right. It's 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 finished now. You don't have to act anymore. Like <laughs> and uh, in the end, um, what, one of the production guys took me home because I had to leave my car there. I couldn't drive, and I got home about one or half one in the morning. And my wife Lynn was at the door, and she opened the door, and I was, <laughs> and she told me, "Get in, you daft get. You're not that good a bleeding actor. Get in." <laughs> so was, but but to, to be honest, that was my favourite. But but favourites for me were always. With these guys, I mean, you know, I spent we had I had like two years living with Jimmy and Jackie, but, but with Lewis, I have to say it, it was every day was a joy to come into work. We had our own language, only we knew, and and John Mack, we couldn't look at each other. They stopped putting us in scenes because we would fall about laughing. We, we were back. I've heard of these stories. With <laughs> scenes with me and John, he was either leaving as I was coming in or vice versa. We just couldn't. Well, there was that scene where Billy pulled uh, Sinbad down the ladder. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. That was, well, that took about four days to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Probably, yeah. We were always getting threatened with the sack. We had the, remember the Father Christmas suit, John? The, uh, oh, God. I couldn't open the door. He had to see my hand going to, to the to the doorknob, you know, and he had the... And you go, hang on a minute. Hey, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on, just give us another minute. <laughs> hang on a minute. <laughs> 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 we were threatened. I could hear him laughing. He was going, it's not my fault, it's him. I got told off oh, by Kate Fitzgerald. Kate Fitzgerald told me, oh, yeah. she, said, she said, no, you've got to stop this. She got really serious. Stop you and Mickey. So stop it. Now stop <laughs> laughing. And I'm going, oh, no, he's not. And he wasn't even in the scene with me. It was just me and Kate. <laughs> and he popped his head round before the take because he was going somewhere else. And he went, oh, like Just to wish head. you and luck. Went, just to wish you luck. <laughs> I went, right, like that. And he went, he went, all right. And then when they said action, I went. Kate <laughs> <laughs> said, he's not even in the room. <laughs> I said, oh, oh. about him. <laughs> it was just to be, Well, Sue had to be the monitor with us a lot as well when we were laughing. She had to be the voice of reason sometimes, and she's a terrible giggler. I and, know. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> with you, if, with you I was. With you I was, Mickey. Well, I, actually, yeah. I actually wanted to do that Dirk Bogart thing. You know when Dirk Bogart, if anybody's old enough to remember Dirk Bogart, uh, the, he, he used to say, can I just have a piece of cardboard there? 
<laughs> he used to say, because they'll give me more than they like that. <laughs> But I used to say with Vicky, can I just, could I just, can I, somebody just put his shirt on? Because honestly, oh, we just sit here and the start to twinkle. You and <laughs> Stephen Pinder, you were the... <laughs> Oh. And, and my but heart. I, 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 I had him out in the scenes. I, I used to put matchsticks in, in the gaps in the bricks where his eyes were because I I couldn't bear working with him either. <laughs> no, I loved working with you, Mickey. But it was just yeah. trying not to giggle. That was. Yeah. All. I know. It was it was just a joy. One we got away with murder, didn't oh, we? Oh, brilliant! Fun. Because I remember Phil Redmond coming down on the set once, and Lewis and I were were out just in a fit of giggles or over the rice and peas. Remember that, mate. Oh and, my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lewis uh, and Phil Redmond came for a visit to the set with some dignitaries from, you know, TV hierarchy, and uh, we're all laughing and joking. And and Phil goes, "Yeah, uh, uh, by the way, this is uh, all part of the scene. All this laughing, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's only worrying about that." And these people were going, oh, and we were, me and Lewis were falling over laughing, and and then. Uh, <laughs> And when we came, we, we went around the back and said to Phil, well, you know, you just come at the wrong time. He said, no, no, he said it was great. I, I wanted to stay, but I've got to take these back. So it was, uh, it was fun all around. It was brilliant. The only weird thing was, he oh. was like, with, as, as the guys will tell you, right up to like, you know, that was in bulk. And then when, when the first set of the action, he could stop like that. And we'd be like bags of shite, man. So, so <laughs> laughing and giggling and everything yeah. like that. You know? yeah. That's all gone. <laughs> ten, ten, ten great years. Well, 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 Bill Dean had that that kind of thing. Bill Dean was was terrible for that. He had that sort of skill at you know pulling faces and uh, but he'd snitch yeah. on you, and um, yeah. Yeah. that was allowed because he was old enough. He he's old, hey, yeah, Zach, he's just said so he's pulling faces at me, and at the end, you know, and he'd, he'd, he'd get you, he'd throw you under the bus, and he'd laugh his head off. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, he was speaking more about Bell. Oh, yeah, I, it, well, it, just it, going it, back it, to that scene, Michael. I can remember that scene. It was really actually, uh, it was gruesome without actually showing anything. It was actually really gruesome that scene. Just the the suggestion and obviously the power was in the acting. I thought. Oh well. Yeah, I mean, it, I think it was. It, it was kind of almost the the end of of such a, a horrendous. Storyline, which is, I mean, and to be fair, I think this, the, the strength of that storyline was the the cast, particularly yeah, you know Sandra Maitland and yeah. Anna Friel and Tiff Chapman. They were they were amazing. They really yeah. were. And I think the heart and soul of that, to be fair, was Anna Friel. I mean, she w was just one of those. We had quite a few people like her who came in. I mean, obviously, mm. you know, different degrees of success, but you know, they came in, and you you kind of knew, well, you know, this is. This is somebody special, and she was sixteen, you mm. know, and uh, she had this sort of maturity about her, you know. I mean, uh, it was great because we 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 were like us older ones we could be like the big brothers or you know, big brothers, you know, grandparents to them, you know. But, <laughs> um, you know, trying to give people advice. I mean, we were the worst people in the world to give advice to, but um, <laughs> it, it was just to, to get that, make sure everybody felt comfortable and. You know, because mm. it was difficult for them to deal with. And um, they were going home with it and living with it. I wasn't so much. It was hard because you were learning the lines, but I could go home and forget. I lived 10 minutes away, 10 minutes drive away. Um, and they were going home and, you know, and they, they could never escape the storyline. I had other things to do and I interacted with other characters, so it wasn't too bad, but it was very hard for them. And, and it was emotionally draining. It really was. I can if imagine. Anyone, Tells you, you know, it, it's 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 hard going, and it was just it was just nice sometimes to get in the scene with Jimmy and Jackie fighting over the drugs and throwing cups at each other. <laughs> that, felt, <laughs> that felt like Disneyland, you know. It was, uh, it was great. <laughs> yeah. We'd be we'd be all in the kitchen, and you know, and the houses were tiny, as, as you know. And uh, we had a, a great lad, Rob Rob O'Keen, who's um, boom operator. He's about three foot tall, Rob. And he won't mind me saying that. And uh, they hired him because he could walk along the units in the kitchen with a boom like that. <laughs> you know, and get into, uh, and, and once he was on set, he, he'd start laughing, we'd start laughing. Oh. Yeah. Brilliant. Wonderful. Okay, well, we'll move to Sue, um, just to pick your brains. I, cause like I, as I said to Michael, um, there must be plenty over the years, but, are what actual scenes um, really stand out in your mind? 
of your 11 years that you were there? Yeah, no, well, I, I mean, I suppose with, the, yeah, the drug storyline, lots to do with the drug storyline. Mm. But I remember there was one scene and um, Jackie found uh, Jimmy's drugs. Uh, he'd taped them under the, the, the cistern in the loo. Yes, and, um, I remember that. He threw them away and and he was devastated. And I just remember it was like a whole day, it felt like, that we spent just literally crying in that toilet you know <laughs> literally and it's like mickey said you people say well you know how do you get over that and go home and just kind of you know have normal life and things but what stays with you is um it, it's the it's the exhaustion really you don't take the sadness home mm, but it's the no. exhaustion really because it does take a lot out of you and i, I remember that day particularly and you know we like to think it was kind of an, a great end result but god it was because we were in such a tight space. And of course, mm. if you think about it, you've got to get your camera in and, and, yeah. the, and the guys in and, all, you know, and uh, yeah, that was really tricky, but also, uh, but brilliant, you know, brilliant to do. But yeah. when he said about the Jordash storyline, I don't know how I managed it really, but on a wing and a prayer, I was involved with the Jordash storyline when Mandy went into jail. And uh, and it was brilliant because Jackie suddenly was like this campaigner. And, and again, I remember one particular day and we were outside of the prison and it was all shot on Steadicam. So, yeah. you know, the cameraman, I think it was Gary actually, and he had this really heavy camera on, you know, and it's all strapped around him. And so it means that kind of as the actor moves, it's all just fluid and there's no, you know, there's no editing needed and it's just, it's just almost as if it's just all so real. And there was one point where Jackie just lost it outside of the jail, and I don't even remember why. Um, but but it was just just a great thing to do. And there was the steady cam just going round with me, and you know, and yeah, I remember that too. And then the other thing that I really remember is working with Sue Johnston because. At that time, I'd only worked on radio with Sue, you know, yeah. before Brookside. And she came in because I didn't come into Brookside until Sue had left and John had left, actually. Mm. And we always said we thought Billy and Jackie should have had, we always thought John should come back and we should have had a little thing somehow. But that, yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, when we go when we go again for the next series, that will happen. Yes, when it comes back. That, yeah, that when it comes me. back. But um, but Sue, I, I'd not worked with in, in any way on the camera. And, and we did a, a spin-off called A Lost Weekend. I love it. And it we never knew how successful that was yeah. going to be at the time. But all I remember was just really some great, oh, God, days and days and nights and nights mm. of just brilliant scenes, mm. beautifully written scenes between Jackie um, and obviously Sheila, because yeah. it's all interwoven the story, you know. Mm. with Barry and everything mm. and I just remember really just great great well I like to think great scenes but you know what I mean great work with Sue oh it was that was really special um so yeah lots lots and I'm sure um I'm sure I can speak for everybody but with all these clips that Ian puts on I turn to David and I go I don't even remember doing that. Oh, no way. It's the weirdest thing. I go, really? I don't even remember shooting that scene. And it must be because there's been such a, a, a span of years um, doing them, like for 11 years, or whatever, but also a span of years since we did them. Yeah. And, and I look at it as if it's almost a different actress playing the part. I go, yeah. Oh, I don't even remember that. You put one on today, and I went, I don't remember that. I thought, oh, you didn't remember that one? I thought, oh, I'm getting that familiar one. Brilliant in that, I have to say. Um, but I don't, I just swear, I don't even remember doing that. So, yeah, that's just time for you, you know. Yeah. Well, I'll have to keep sending you the clips, so won't I? You have to keep putting them up, yeah. Yeah, I'll keep putting them on. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. I mean, so many great scenes from, from yeah. everybody, obviously. Yeah. Well, I loved that special, by the way, The Lost Weekend, and the, uh, the one, because Sheila came back for the second one, Friday the 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th, she did as well. And we well. got to hear about Billy Corkill as well, didn't we? Um, I think... I didn't do it. I don't think I did a, a spin-off one. No, because like since since that... You did we, Thursday the 12th. Yeah. Thursday the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do the special, but we... we did the yeah. Yeah. Sheila did it's talk about Billy in that special, John. Oh, right. 
And yeah, but if you only talked about you don't get a fee. That's oh, yeah, the you <laughs> if you just talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, because I think Tracy had been had got married somewhere and Doreen had turned up. This is what Sheila was talking about. Oh, right. And I honestly thought, oh, that's gonna be the next video special. Trace's yeah. wedding, uh, Billy and Doreen will come back into it and Sheila and I was really looking forward to that, but obviously it didn't happen. No. So I thought that's what was going to happen then, but never mind. No, well. Never mind. Well, moving on, I'll move on to you then, John, because I'm sure there's loads that you can remember, I'm sure. You're great. Well, well like Sue said, you know, there was so that many, many. scenes written uh, for, for all of us and everything, but I was lucky enough to work with two great actresses, you know, mm. uh, with Sue Johnson and Kate Fitzgerald, so that helps. And also wonderful writers, mm. Jimmy McGovern being one of those wonderful writers. And also, so so if you get a if you get a script from any of those brilliant writers we had, it was it used to like I used to get so excited by it. I used to go, have you read this? Have you read the latest episode? It's absolutely brilliant, and you couldn't wait to get your teeth into it because it was all there on the page. And if you were half a decent actor, you would bring it on, and it was like, uh, and the crews and everything were fantastic, you know. And, and we were using the Steadicam a lot, as Sue said you know, with the camera following you all around. And one of my favourites, obviously, is the uh, driving around the close one. But I love the, that scene. But it's that's the way my go-to scene, actually. If, yeah, if anybody hasn't seen Brookside, that's the one I introduced them to. <laughs> yeah. well, that, well, funny enough, my son, uh, Joe, the youngest, had never seen Brookside. He's seen me in other stuff, but he'd never seen Brookside. And through one of your clips, he went, hey, Dad, that was brilliant, that, uh, that stuff where you drive around the close and all that. So mm. it was great to have that in archive so you can show it your kids and your grandkids and everything, all these really wonderful scenes. So, you know, that was my favorite in a way because of the buildup and the passion. And I never cried in that because it was all pent up anger. It was all like in there, trying to hold it in and trying to, you know, sort of because of what Doreen happened, it was a whole situation. Mm. And it was all to do with the Thatcher years and everything because Jimmy had written it that way. Uh, a, a man who is like fighting for his family, who's apolitical. So he doesn't have any politics at all. His politics and his family. So therefore he ends up, you know, having to fight for them, you know, doing it any way you like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose it's a gift when you've uh, been, you they write a character out for it and we all put meat on that character. So mm -hmm. between us, the writers and the producer, we create something, hopefully. And you, you're sustaining it for years and years. Like in your cases, like you've been in it longer than I was, you were in there 10, 11 years. You know, to hold that character, those characters together for that amount of time takes some doing because, you know, you'd be in the office with the producer sometimes saying, I can't do this scene because I've created continuity for a character and you've written him, you've written it wrong and you can't do it. So you end up fighting like mad, fighting your corner to, to make sure, uh, you know, you do justice, you know, to the audience and to yourself. So... You know, the, like you say, there was that many scenes, it was hard to pick which one. But I used, I used to actually watch it after I'd left. Usually things that I've left, I don't watch because <laughs> I'm not in it anymore. <laughs> but I still used to watch Brookside after I'd left because it was, it was so good. And yeah, then you've good. got me haunting you with these clips. Yeah, they you. Yeah. <laughs> not letting you forget. Because yeah. there was a lot of scenes I loved that you did with uh, Kate Fitzgerald. Some really yeah. emotional scenes. Like when she left and she came back uh, a couple of years later, yeah. And that was a really emotional scene. Yeah. No, that all that stuff when she comes back and he has to, and he's he's taken up with the, with Sheila. As, as yeah. And he's got to try and like hide that because he's still in love with Dorian, you know. So it was all that. Uh, you convey you know, that really well. I do remember because I've been watching it recently, you see. So it's all recent in my mind, but you really conveyed that well. You could tell that he was still definitely, oh, yeah. uh, you know, he's in a real dilemma. Definitely. He just couldn't live with it. He was hard to live with. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. So it was Dorian, though. She was impossible, wasn't she, really? Oh, she was. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but, Pretty good yeah, but so was Billy. <laughs> so was Billy. He was, he was hard to live with. But going back on one of those little anecdotes that uh, Mickey was talking about, about uh, the freedom of the, the close and that. I remember when we used to, we were tired and we used to get our head down. I remember once getting my head down in, uh, in Harry Cross's bed. And, and like Mickey, uh, Phil was showing around dignitaries. I think Jeremy Isaacs from Channel 4 was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I was in Harry Cross's bed and they all came in. And they went, and they went, and this is where Harry Cross's bed. And I went, 
with John McArdle in it. And I went, oh, hello, yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 and re I'm rehearsing, I'm rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was all, it was all like, and you used to get like, what, one of the great things I used to like was Paul Usher. Paul Usher, if you didn't get the scene right, Paul used to say, that was crap. We're doing it again. <laughs> really? And he had some high standards. Paul had some high standards that if you were doing a shit scene, he would like say, no, we're doing that again, Macca. That's the, that's the way it goes. And that's what I loved about it. He didn't mind criticism with your fellow actors because you, you trusted them, didn't you? Yeah, yeah constructive. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. Was, uh, Usher was great because he was, he was one of the fastest learners of anyone. You know, oh, he, yeah. he, could, he could learn stuff you know, pages, and but, the, but the, the interesting thing was, you know, you, you fall into the trap sometimes of saying it the way you've learned it, you know, and if you don't yeah. sort of, you know, digest it properly and, and take it all in, he could do that, you know, um, yeah. and it, it was one of those great skills, and he knew, he knew so much about how TV worked, I thought he would make a great director, Usher, mm. because yeah. he, he knew how it worked, and, and he would say, you know, uh, sometimes you, you'd have a, a youngish director and the crew were great, they, they would help anybody yeah um and he'd say well i'm looking to do it. and he'd say do it that way and that way save yourself a shot by doing it that way and then you've got that but great you know and then we yeah. you know you'd get it all in because you know by thursday you know you'd have some directors coming in trying to be alfred hitchcock and by thursday they're panicking because they've got a load to shoot it's got to be flat yeah. and mm. so they say how do we shoot this and there was a way of shooting it and the crew would go okay here's how we do it and yeah we'd have people like usher on you know i, I learned a lot from him it was, you know, because I, I think he's br he was brilliant. Have you seen Amazing. him in extenders any of the uh, recently? I didn't I've, see I've watched, I watched stuff with Usher in it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I he's still watch scary. Yeah. Well, he yeah. still scares oh, yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of him. Now he's really good. <laughs> oh, he's great, lad. Yeah, still yeah. in touch. He's, he's great, lad. Mm. Right. Well, oh, Lewis. Lewis. I know you've got lots to uh, tell. What are your sort of... Um, what? Seems in your mind. Quiet, oh, Emmerich. It's, it's, it's really <laughs> about, about because it just reminded me of. Um, I, I hadn't been in it that long. I think uh, Macker and Sue. That was just getting the tail end of age, just ready to leave. And there's a scene in the close where by a big artist comes in and nearly knocks Mick Sunley over, and I had to sort of kick off at him, and. Um, I don't know whether it was because I felt a little bit, you know, there's a lot of people there. So as an actor, you feel a little bit intimidated or are you doing too much or, or, or what, you know what I mean? But the director seemed to think it was all right. I can't remember his name, but, but just, just pulled me to one side. No great grand manner or telling me. He just said, oh, look, you know, it's, you know, it's so on. Like, it's just nice little word in here. And then I went out and did it and a whole different, and, and, and it, it come across as a father that nearly had his son. Mm. You know what I mean, and that was yeah. that was a measure of the man. I hadn't had much. I was in very little scenes with the usher, and it was early days. And uh, I, I remember things like that. And it's what was the guys are saying about the supportiveness of the people that were there from cast that already there, or the, the the you know the crew, anybody like that. And that was just a little moment. And um, and and the guys, you, you know, uh, Jimmy Mulhern, you know the um, sound. Jimmy yeah, Mul, yeah, see him, still see him all the time, yeah. So what happened was the um, the usher got off. He wasn't happy. So it was all to do with the uh, you know the, the plague, the, the, the coronavirus of the day. Yeah. And 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 oh, I, yeah. I, got in, I was I was called in like at seven o'clock in the morning. I was meant to be an eight. I got an early call. And Mal Young, the producer, then was waiting for me in, in, the, in the dressing room. Said, "Look, you know, uh, the usher's got off. So all his dialogue, we're going to have to put it onto Mick." And it's like, oh, what the. <laughs> well, he said, look, we're awfully sorry and like that. And, and Fanny Arkham, the first one, I said, he said, look, we'll be dead patient with you, even like that. Well, it's it's a bit like Mac was saying before, you've built up a character. Then I, I'm reading what really Fanny should be saying. But anyway, we're doing this. It's a scene where Mick's saying, like, like, look, everybody stay. Nobody goes off the close. Everybody stays there. And and, <laughs> and Mully just pulled me one side and he said, you look like you look like John Wayne telling them they can't leave town. Now, if I was coming from anybody else, I'd have said, fuck off, you. What are you doing telling me that for? He was absolutely right, because it was like Lewis Emmerich trying to do mixed lines that were written for Paul, for Paul Usher, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I, when I see him, I still say to him, thanks for that, because that would, again, the director didn't pick up on it, and it would have looked totally foolish, you know what I mean? But again, it's just supportiveness. 
the best scenes, I don't know. I, a bit like Mickey, man. I'm thinking about, I remember we did a scene. A lot of the stuff I liked, as well as the dramatic stuff, was just two mates who, and it was just ordinary stuff. Yeah. Like one time, I think yeah. stuff where Mick and Sinbad were decorating, decorating with the wallpaper. You remember Mick and, and uh, yeah. Morgan was, uh, was directing it. And they put pieces of string on it because the, 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 the paper was supposed to sort of just slide down. Right. And somebody, slide somebody down on the wall. pulling it off camera. <laughs> and, and it just wouldn't, the paper wouldn't behave itself. It, it, it was under the ass, you know what I mean? It, <laughs> would, it, would, it wouldn't, what? And we would just be laughing at it, this thing. Yeah. And, and what did we call it? Was it Nelly Morgan, wasn't it we called them? Yeah, and Nelly Morgan. Like, come, yeah. on, come on, come on, lads. And the more he said that, the more we started laughing. Just, and it was just two lads. Wallpaper and or yeah, yeah. wallpaper before what yeah. I had cross got back, and it was stuff like that that I love. But I think, um, in terms of it, you put a lovely scene up a few weeks ago, and it was um, Mick in court after the mercy killing of his mother in law, yes. Uh, oh, yes. And then, um, and it, it was, was emotional, really emotional, emotional, long scene. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the pages, and uh, Morris Hutchinson, Mo Hutchinson was directing, and then. Um, he said, I'm going to come in, I'm going to do the long shot, then I'm going to come in for all, all the meat and all like that. And it was so beautifully written, it was for an actor, it just fell off the tongue like that, just tripped off. And we did it, and, and in the end, we went right the way through and he said, we don't need to come in. It's all there. He just, you know what I mean? That's a real right. thing. I'll just put it in yeah. the, one, the one. Maybe the pressure's off because I thought he was going to come in, but I just, and the great dialogue, Great scenes. Everybody was around. Everybody was supportive. All mm. supporting artists. All the guys that were there. Because one time, me and Mickey were doing a court scene, and the court is before the sleep where we're in the key. <laughs> <laughs> it, the yeah. camera just pans along like that. I don't know who's in court. And me and Mickey like that. It just, it just. <laughs> 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 you remember the, that? The, it the, never, it never got into that one. It was oh, so there was a, the, a lovely lad playing the judge, and he, he left his head up. He went. Somebody's snoring. <laughs> me and him, me and Lewis, like that. <laughs> we, 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 it was so oh, hot. Man. You couldn't, you <laughs> couldn't put the, the, you couldn't put the aircon on in the courtroom because it made some trouble. You know, was, yeah. we, were, we were melting. John oh, Middleton no, was, um, was the um, court, the jury foreman, and uh, was right, Jim yeah. Whelan was in those scenes. And, and Jim Whelan, you know, yes. We, uh, we, had, we had such fun. And of yeah, course, you said um, you kept him laugh behind the scenes as well, Michael. Oh, no, it was, it was great. But you know, once you saw someone laugh, that was it. We were in like Flynn, you know, you, you, oh, you yeah, thought, yeah, oh, I've got yeah. an audience. Let's make some. And, and Dennis Lill, wonderful. He, he was Mr. Rose in the Royal in later years. Oh, yeah. And he was the um, the, the uh, prosecuting uh, lawyer. And uh, he had reams and reams and reams of legalese to get through, you know, during the court oh, stuff. Yeah. And um, we were laughing our heads off, me and the big fella there, you know, just, just screaming. Crap. And he was great about it, Dennis. And we talked about it years later. He said he had to keep his face straight. You could, you could see us snoring and, you know, <laughs> spluttering. And... <laughs> Funny, there was, there was a great scene, and I, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but young Stevie Cole is a, a beautiful lad, played um, Lewis's boy. And <laughs> we had these scenes, and I was always kind of, you know, the, the nice uncle, and Stevie was a lovely kid and is a lovely kid. And, um, you know, being a young lad, and he he was about 17 or so, and he, you know, he was having staying up late or whatever he was doing, he was having a life, and he was a young TV star, and he was having the time of life. And he come into it one morning, and then Lewis was always great, he was a dad's room. And we had this scene where Lewis has got to give him a bit of a rollicking, and he's shouting, and I've got, I'm sort of sat behind him on the couch, and I'm going to make, oh, you know, calm down a little bit, kind of. And then the dialogue suddenly changed, and we'd been running it a while. And he's going, "Are you listening? Hey, are you listening to me? What are you doing? Are you like, what? And I'm like, what has he changed?" It? And what has happened was Stevie had fallen asleep while he was getting the, a bollocking of his dad. He was like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't see his face. And uh, <laughs> oh, and uh, he, said, yeah. and he dragged him out. Took him outside in the garden, gave him a talent turn, and then Stevie come back in. But I couldn't look at him because he knew I'd start laughing. And he, Lewis, the one time he, he wasn't looking at me because he knew we had to get, you know, oh, fun. Just happy days. The laugh but, You know, you'd get the sack anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
sounds you, good for you. You do it in Fords. <laughs> You're up the road. <laughs> what <I> tell you? <laughs> Oh. Well, There's so many laughs. I mean, that's all. I, I can't. You know, when I watch some of the the uh, some great clips you, you put up, I, they always make me cry. A because we're oh, not really that. and and because you know I don't I don't remember them. You know, and, and then yeah. well, I just remember all the laughs and yeah. You know, the, like Sue said before, there's some scenes I, I have absolutely no memory of whatsoever. Yeah. I don't remember being. In that. I don't remember. You know, it's, it's odd, and it is like watching somebody else. But you know, it's I, I look back so fond. I mean, everybody from the cast, the crew, and everybody, Gene and Ronna, who were the girls in the canteen, mm. you know, would, wouldn't let me eat chips. I I couldn't eat chips for ten years <laughs> as they were worried about my health. And I was saying, no, yeah. he's got to be fat. He's got to be bit. No, yeah, he's like, shut up. You're not having chips. And John Mack one day, he didn't know, oh, yeah. and I said to him, John, I said, I'm upstairs, I've got to go to do some stuff. I said, would you get me uh, chips, uh, fish chips, peas, dip, 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 a, a plate about that big? And, and, um, and I put it, and I put it. <laughs> and, and, and Ronna was, was dishing it out and said, and I'll have a bit of that, and I'll have some of them as well, and throw a bit of that on. And, got, and she was going, you don't normally eat that. And she, <laughs> she rumbled it. And as he was going up the stairs, she chased him. <laughs> I, I grabbed the plate. <laughs> Vaulted yes. over the banister, got past Ronna. She tried to trip me up. She would have killed me. She would have happily killed me. I ran out <laughs> into the close, and they, they were shooting. They hadn't broke for lunch on the other shoots, and I ran across the close with the plate of fish and chips right in the back of shot, trying to get out of the way from. Oh, <laughs> yeah. happy days. Well, Michael, actually, did you see the clip I did earlier on Twitter, um, where Sinbad found his long lost mother? Mary, I, I didn't see it, but yeah, I remember it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that, was uh, that was the point where we started to see a bit more about Sinbad's backstory, and wasn't it? Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. He, he's, yeah. He, all of a sudden, he, he developed this great story, and, and that he'd been in a home as a kid, and uh, he didn't been care homes, and and then he found his mum. You know, it was uh, it was great. And Mary Healy, wonderful. Mary Healy oh, came yeah, into yeah. play. His mum, she was she was amazing, and. Um, his girlfriend at the time was Marcia, uh, yes. Gerald Maker, played it, and uh, you know it was it was great fun. It just gave us another dimension, you know, and it was uh, it was wonderful to do. She was amazing, Mary Healy, and she'd done everything, done mm. yeah, everything, a lot of things. Very familiar TV face, isn't she? Oh yeah, films and everything, loads of theatre. She was well respected and well known. Yeah. She was lovely. Mm. Um, you know, we, we we go out to dinner a couple of times. She had family in Allerton and. Um, yeah, she was lovely. She was a lovely person, you know, she really was. Mm. And she she gave it so, you know, like John said, you're working with people you, who give you so much. You know, they come in and you know they've got that that thing about them that they bring something else to the table and it, it helps you along. You know, because I remember thinking, oh, well, I better learn this. Mm. She's, she's a bit good. one of those people, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, totally, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, there were so many. I mean, we had... So many great people, you know, would pop in and, you know, uh, now and again, oh, look who it is. And there's, you know, and you were fans of some people, you know, Brian Murphy come in for a little while yeah, and he's yeah, done yeah. everything. And he's fabulous, you know, Brian and lovely man. He'd he, he done tons of stuff. And uh, we had Chris Blake one time. Oh. But very early days, it was Ian Hendry who came into play. Oh, Marie Jackson's dad. Marie Jackson's dad, yeah. David Jackson. Oh, I saw was. that recently, you see. Oh, well, he was, he was amazing. I remember sitting, I was only a recurring character at the time. And I remember sitting in the green room. The green room was about four foot square cupboard. And, um, you know, you had to look at the telly like that. And um, <laughs> he, he, he was sat in there and myself and, and one of the other lads were, were chatting to him and he was telling us all these wonderful stories. Of course, his contemporaries were Sean Connery, Michael Caine and, and all those guys. And he'd done a brilliant, so much wonderful stuff and he just regaled us with all these fabulous stories he was an amazing man imagine you know yeah, yeah i think i it think was, rookie was his last job i was just about to say it was a few months off his death wasn't it yeah badly because yeah. he, um, he did you know, seem in a genuinely bad way in the program i didn't know if it was just his character but really uh he had a really throaty cough in there and but he used it he used it for his character as well oh yeah you know, yeah mm. and um Nobody knew, you know. Certainly, I didn't. I was only in and out, and I was very sad to hear he passed away because he was—he was a, you know, a hero of mine. Certainly, yeah. And I was, and uh, but there were so many, just so many terrific people came in, you know. And 
yeah. bad little parts, and it was, uh, you know, people wanted to do it, you know. And I, I remember when when they were casting Sinbad's mum, and the producer asked me to sit in and, and read, and I thought, oh, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't, you know, you know, like I'm, I'm sitting in on casting, and, and you know, people are coming in, fellow actors are coming in for the job, and and he persuaded me that it'd be a good thing for them to sort of interact with the actual person he would be working with. And yeah. five or six really well-known actresses came in, you know, and I was like, oh, wow. And everyone, they, they, they didn't ask me. I, it wasn't anything to do with me. I didn't get involved. But I, I couldn't help saying at the end, she's good, isn't she? She's good, you know. <laughs> and, and, of course, when, when Mary came in, nothing was said. I mean, you could, you, you could hear a pin drop. She just so had it, you know. Mm. Every, I think everyone... Had it in really the bag. Good. Yeah. Somebody else talk for a bit now, because... Oh, OK. Oh, oh, oh. I'm bored on myself. Oh, OK. Well, the next <laughs> Sorry, question is... I'm only <laughs> the next question is... Um, get my ages. Do you ever still get people calling out your character's name in the street? It's probably an obvious one. Because I know that you've obviously gone on to do... All of you have gone on to do so, much, so many different things. Um, Sue, I know you're working in theatre now. Uh, theatre director. Um, so I can imagine at, one, at some point... Does it ever become quite annoying um, that people want to talk to you about Brookside all the time? And you're thinking, well, I want to sort of talk about what I'm doing now rather than what I was doing 20 years ago. Does it get to that stage? I, 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 I find it quite flattering, really. I, I think it's yeah. nice and people, people say it with affection. You know, all right, Mick, and it, I, I, it never, I never get fed up with it, really. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm getting less and less now, but, but it's never... It, it's, it's a couple of moments out of out of your life what is it you know what i mean yeah and and you know that sometimes i've seen some people be visibly you know quite nervous approaching you think well you're not going to sort of burst that bubble you know what i mean it's just yeah i make i say yeah all right and they come up with other stories or something and 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 a bit like the clip you showed they'll say, they'll say something that i had even forgotten that that nick had been involved in so i yeah to answer your question i i, I don't get um precious about it or annoyed about it it's after a compliment, like, really, isn't it? Because it's been so years, long ago. Years. Yeah, it's nice that people still remember, you know what I mean? 19 years for me, so... Uh, and so, yeah, it's nice. nice. OK. Sue, what do you... I, do you get anybody calling out? Jackie, you're killing the streets. Uh, no, not now, but no. It did go on for a, a long time, the, the Jackie thing, but I agree. Mm. Well, I'm sure everybody's going to say the same thing, but I just think I've no time for people who actually don't want to remember the thing that uh, actually was part of you know their glory days kind of thing yeah. I just think like Lewis said you, you should be it's flattering really that people were so taken with something that you were a part of and a character that maybe you know you helped develop that I think you know why wouldn't we just welcome that and um that's not to say there's a time and a place for everything, do you know what I mean? So, but, but I think people are generally very sensitive to that. And I think what happens more now is, oh, I really miss Brookside. That's what most people say. Oh, yeah, 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 so it's not so much the, oh, hi, Jackie thing, it's, it's kind of, oh, but you do get, oh my God, it is, oh my God, it is you. I loved Brookside. So that tends to be the thing now that people say. And, you know, and really people are just very nice. I, I, I don't think, because if you've played a character that people have kind of taken to their hearts and mm -hmm. have an empathy with. Yes. And, you know, then, then really they're going to kind of be nice to you. <laughs> I think if you've a character that people maybe didn't like that may be different but and I do feel for some some actors actually who are they've got storylines where they're really horrible you know I think there's some been incarnations who brilliantly played I have to say but they still carry that outside you know people going oh I'll leave her alone and all this but for me you know Jackie was somebody that um she had so many uh problems that people could really empathize with yeah. um, and real life stories you know that, that she was really like, beaten down in the end wasn't she she was what she was really beaten down in the end by everything because she just yeah. wanted to lead a normal quiet life yeah. didn't she? No, and she but she was strong and she yeah. was a gay icon which i welcomed which was great <laughs> yeah. you know which was lovely and and it is a funny story that um 
a year ago, I was directing uh, Bessie and Joan about Betty D Bet Davis and Joan Crawford. Oh yes, yes. Oatmeal Theatre, and and of course, it 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 attracted a lot of um, of, of 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 gay um, you know supporters of Bet and, and Joan. So we had a lot of Canal Street coming through, which was just brilliant. And honestly, you couldn't get a seat. And this one night in the bar at Hope Mill. Um, that a, a load of guys just came over to me and they just went, I don't believe us, I don't believe us. We're watching Bed Davis and Joan Crawford. And then we turn around and we go, oh my God, look who's at the It's Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it just made them. <laughs> just had a great night then and it was drinks all around and I took them over to meet the actresses playing Bet and Joan and, and you know so some things just never um, never go really from people's memory and and so well, I suppose that long winded winded reply was it's kind of nice really it's just yeah nice. you embrace it yeah, you do. yeah. yeah. But, uh, just a quick one do you ever get recognized for glory or in Coronation Street well, that's really weird, yes. And sometimes people have, because let's be honest, you, you're only as well known as the programmes that people have seen you in. Yeah. So people just never saw me in Brookside. So they go, oh, I used to love Gloria. Oh, Glow. And I kind of go, oh my God, do you not think I did anything after that? <laughs> All kind of, yeah, but there are people, of course, that remember, um, remember Gloria. Gloria was just a bit too nice for her own good, really. She... She was. Just, she didn't have Jackie's strength to fight off the. Um, you People know. like Alan Bradley. Alan Bradley, um, yeah. yeah, Johnny Briggs' character, Mike Bond, all of them. They all had a shot at Gloria, and she just fell for it. So yeah. yeah. And so, didn't you get? I've just got to remember actually, because um, just after Brookside finished, if I remember rightly. You were reunited with Julie Goodyear for some Daz adverts. I think it was like Jackie meets Bet. I think. I that was bizarre. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll, this is really, every actor will identify with this. I was going to do Panto, and we heard the Panto wasn't going to happen. And Panto means, if you've been on the television and you've got profile, Panto usually means really good money for a short amount of time that's going to see you through if nothing comes through in the spring. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, I was doing this panto and then it fell through. I think the dates clashed, or I don't even remember now, but all we went is, oh no, like this. And then my agent rang and said, um, would you be interested in a Daz advert? And of course, you know, the old attitude to commercials was always, oh, you know. And I went, oh, I don't know. And, and she went, well, it is an offer. I went, oh. And she went, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's it's all about the soaps, this advert, and, you know, there's going to be truly good you and I think. So, so then she said the fee, and I went, yes, I didn't even know. <laughs> and, oh, really? <laughs> and I did it, and I did it. And then um, about, I don't know what it was, it, it maybe six months later, and and I wasn't doing anything at the time, and, um, and my agent just rang and said, uh, they just want to rerun the advert, but they want your permission. And I just went, how much? And she told me three. And I went, oh, yes, they've got my permission. <laughs> 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 that that was advert funny. was just brilliant. Just great to do. And, of course, you know, a whole day with Julie or two days, I think we had. I imagine that was good fun. It was really nice. And she she always, you because when I went into the street very quickly, um, I'd gone to the producer and, <laughs> and said, um, and my biological clock is I've worth got a course, I, really wanna, I really want to have a baby. I really want to have a baby. I really want to have a baby. I really have a baby. <laughs> and he just went, they're sending me up. And he just went, um, well, look, these things take time. Go away and come back when you're pregnant. And it, it happened st really straight away. So I went back and I went, oh, hello. Anyway, they, they were really sweet. <laughs> work around it but julie used to call me dumbo but lovable lovable, oh, I mean, lovable. it was very affectionate and, <laughs> and she and so on the day of the advert she went dumbo <laughs> and I, I mean it's long gone the thing. but yeah we just had great fun we, we always actually got on really really well and so i always do say that uh, i know that there are lots of stories about you know um have Julie been very scary and all that, but for Feverish. me, yeah, 
yes, I was a bit nervous about working with her, but for me, to me, she was incredibly kind. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, she was. <laughs> well, I heard that, that she's great to those that she gets on with. That's oh. something I heard about, so. Okay, well, she obviously got on with me. <laughs> yes, she obviously did. <laughs> she's actually my favourite character in Coronation Street of all time, by the way. Really? Really good, G, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legend. No, she was, she was, yeah, uh, it was a tour de force, you know, that yeah. performance. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. What about uh, John? Do you still get, because I know that you've gone on to have like Helen Mirren as your lover and all these leading <laughs> ladies. Do you still get called Billy Corkle in the street? Well, let's put it this way. I mean, I've been in the business 40 years, like a lot of you guys have. And uh, five years of my life was in Brookside. So I had the rest, you know, 35 years of doing lots of other things uh, like everyone else. And every now and again, obviously people go, all right, Billy, or... Or and places that you don't expect, not just in Liverpool, I'd be in the far ends of Scotland and there'd be a farmer going, oh, hey, that's that bully cartel fellow there. So you're just like, no matter where you go, it's spread over a wide area. But uh, I'm going back to what Mickey was talking about earlier, about the guests we used to have in, uh, you know, really well-known actors and great actors. Uh, and, and this anecdote I'm going to tell you is about Alan, uh, Alan Igbon. And Alan was... Uh, a great Manchester actor who'd been in the black stuff and everything like this. And he, he came in to do about 15 episodes uh, about the robbery scenes. And he'd never been in a long running soap or anything before this. So, you know, he, he, he didn't know what it was going to be like because he'd just do one off dramas and what have you. Anyway, after he'd been in a couple of weeks and nothing had gone out yet on air, he walked to the end of the close. And at the end of the close, the kids would wait and ask for your autographs. And, you know, they'd be hanging around by the car park and everything. And he was out, he was going out one night and uh, I was going up. Oh, yeah, I was going out. And you were going, all right, Billy, have you got your autograph there? And I went, all right, yeah. And uh, I said, what about him? He's an actor to Alan Igbon. And he went, I don't know him. He's not being in Brookside, is he? And I went, well, he's, he's a good actor. And he went, I don't care. I don't care. He's not being in Brookside. I said, he, he's, he'll be on in a few weeks. He went, I'm going to ask for him then, then, okay. <laughs> six weeks go six weeks go by right and this kid is waiting at the end of the end of the close and alan told me this because i wasn't there he said that kid came up to me and he went hey mate give us your autograph so alan went alan big bon. he said what's that he said it's my name he went don't put that put billy's mate <laughs> <laughs> But when you think about it now, a lot of our audience, like, uh, I've got to be like, you've got to be like 38. My daughter was only like, Katie was, what was she, five when I was in Brookside? So anyone, and she's 37 now, so anyone younger than that won't know, won't know you. Most of the people that know you are over 40, they have to be, unless they were like little kids and they watched it, you know. <laughs> so your audience is, you know, getting, you know, thinner and thinner, but it is nice. It's great. No, I don't care what anyone says. When someone recognises you from what you've done, it's a great feeling because you think yeah. well, that work's still there, isn't it? And I don't think anyone would yeah. deny that, would they? No, no. Do you say to that, Michael? I mean, I can imagine you get lots of people saying, "All right, Sinbad in the street." Still, yeah, it, it's it. The only time it annoys me is when he shouts, "All right, Jackie." Do you mean, I, I, that <laughs> really annoys me, but. No, I, I, I uh, it, it is funny. We're not always at our best, and, and I, I found it in the very early days a, a little bit difficult to deal with. You know, mm. I, I, your life suddenly changes, and all of a sudden, to everybody around, you're somebody else. And you know, and the character, you know, as the, mm. all the guys tonight, they all their characters had a huge impact in the show. And I remember very, very early on. Um, and I was in town in Liverpool, and you know, in Liverpool, they either love you aggressively or they hate you aggressively. And okay. they're, they're great, there's no gray area, they'll say one or but they'll always come up and tell you, which is great. And um, I remember <laughs> I was shopping and I, I was on my own, or I was going to whatever I was doing, and I hear from across the road, and I went, Oh no, God, it started, you know. And it was relentless, this guy shop, and I ducked into a shop. 
And I was saying, how do I deal with this? Oh my God, you know, and I'm, I'm gonna, I have to go that way. I've got to pass this guy. He doesn't seem to be moving. It, it's coming from over there by, by where next is now, I think. We're, and I decided, oh, you know, blow this out. I've got to go out. I just kept it. It was in the shop and just said, hey, you know. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I went out and I walked around. I got past, there was a fella selling bin bags. <laughs> oh, you joking? <laughs> <laughs> he was going, bin bags! <laughs> Obviously confusing facts and fiction. So there's, there's the ego gone, you know, so... Um, yeah, bin bags. It, it's, it's great, like the guys were saying, it's one of them things, you might not always be at your best, and sometimes, so, you know, um, what happens now, when, when you're on screen, it's, it's heavy going, because you can't go anywhere sometimes, particularly if there's a storyline that... You know, because it, it kind of takes over you, you with your family or, you know, you, you know, people come, you don't mean to be, they just, they just want to, you know, say hello. But um, as the older you get now, the people that recognise you now or will say something, they usually say something, hi, yeah, and how are you doing? And oh, I haven't seen you for a while. And it's lovely. But what is really nice, and my missus is an actor and she always reminds me of it. She says, now, isn't that nice how good you feel? When someone says, listen, you know what? I love that show, and I particularly love this. Or when you, and I loved your character because he meant this, or he meant that to whatever. And, and you know, you for every idiot, there's a thousand nice ones. And you do get the odd idiot, but sometimes that's just people being nervous and they don't know how to, you know, say hello to you. But you know, you, you I, I did find it very difficult to deal with very early on. Mm. And then after a while, you know, these people just, especially when you live, I, I live at home, you know, people teach you very early on, you know, you've got to live with it, get on with it and um, mm. and embrace it because, yeah, enjoy it. you know, that's, that's who you are to a lot of people. And, you know, and to be fair, it's never, you know, it's never done me any harm. You know, um, in the times I've had phone calls for jobs from people who were young lads or young girls working mm. at Brookie, they were young camera operators or you know production staff and all of a sudden they're a producer of a show or you know a director and they say hey would you come along and do a and I, honestly it's it's happened to me so many times so I'm ever so grateful and the guys are the same you know they you know we, we've all had that and it's you know it, it's such a nice feeling so yeah for me it's it's amazing yeah yeah great okay well this um coming up to the last couple of questions because um Oh, just before we do, actually, this is something else I wanted to remind. I just wanted to remind everybody about, because we've spoken about um, Bill Dean. Um, John, actually, you'd be able to tell us a bit about Jim Wiggins and Doreen Sloan, who played Paul and Annabelle Collins, because I don't really think they get their dues anymore. This is what I was saying the other day about Channel 4. It's a shame that they've never made a documentary about Brookside since it finished 17 years ago. And I think people like Paul... Uh, Jim Wiggins, Doreen Sloan, Gladys Ambrose, Bill Dean, they don't really get their credit, I don't think. Yeah. You know, you hear about Ilder Ogden, Doc Cotton as soap legends, which is great, which they are. Um, but absolutely, Julie and uh, Harry Cross, they were absolute soap legends. Yeah. Well, the Gladys, yeah. I don't say the Gladys Ambrose, uh, Julia, Bro Julia Brogan, wasn't it? Mm. I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that was a, I used to remember a couple of times that they, the camera would start on their shoes. Because she used yeah. to wear the particularly really high and the walk she had. Yeah. I, I loved her walk, yeah. <laughs> she, was a, she was a character that, like you say, does not get the dues. That she, she was a character that would, would, is up there with any of them. That oh, absolutely. Or, you know, so she, she was a character in real life. Wonderful. And, wonderful. And, and you know what she always used to say, didn't she, guys? Like, you know, it took me 40 years to be an overnight success. She, she so loved being in Brooks. I remember... Yeah. She was a recurring character, and then when they took her on as a regular, she she just you know she could have touched the moon and back. She was just so great. She so yeah. loved the show. She loved everything about it, and um, <laughs> and her as a character, uh, yeah, she she like you say doesn't get the the kudos that she should. I, uh, she, I she was ever ever so generous as well because the, the very first thing oh, I ever God. did on stage, Gladys was in it, you know, and um, she was wonderful. So we were we were pals. For many years and, and as Lewis said when she came into the show she was just she she was so such a girl if, if that's not a bad yeah. thing to say you know she she loved it she loved all the characters and she kept up with it and, mm. you know yeah. a, a wonderful entertainer and a singer for yeah. donkey's years before she went into Brooklyn she had the mm. series oh she was amazing wonderful singer she was 
you know, like Gracie Fields and, and people like yeah. that. She, she was, a, and it, she, her husband Johnny was, um, they, they she used to be his straight man when they did a drunk actor. Johnny was an acrobat. Little Johnny Ambrose, he, amazing. And the girls, her daughters were, were, were also in the business. Brilliant. She was wonderful. She loved it. And, yeah, uh, we loved her. She was amazing. I always well, remember. Sorry, Vicky, you used to. Oh, sorry. You, you'd be standing on the side of. Uh, sorry, John. Uh, no, you'd go be on. standing on the side of uh, the set with with Gladys, and she'd suddenly go. <laughs> <laughs> energy, energy, energy for the scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. She was fun. Yeah. Anyway, she was she was like a little girl in many ways. She. She was so young always, you know. Um, young and yeah, she was. Just a joy, mm. Gladys. She really and she was, was so funny in every she, scene she was in. I can't think of uh, anything where she didn't make you laugh. She, she gave it. She gave it everything. She was as honest about the character yeah. as anyone I've ever worked with. Yeah. She really, remember, she remember. believed in it. And she, you know, yeah. she, she was Julia when she did it. She was an amazing, amazing character. She, she did a scene that made me, caught me and uh, Steve Penn, the corpse, for nearly half an hour. And... Uh, she, she used to put everything into it, like you said, Mickey. She put her heart and soul into every line and everything. And she said it so well and so truthful and honest that when, <laughs> when she said that certain lines, they were so funny. And me and Pinder couldn't get our act together. And, this, and the line she used to say, she was going, oh, we went on holiday. It was lovely, she said. And this hotel, it was that posh. It had its own private bottle opener on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Me, me, me and Pinder could not, couldn't speak after she, and she was going, what are you laughing at? It wasn't funny. <laughs> and no, it's our fault. Sorry, Gladys. But she was... She just she was, did. She did have all that, though, didn't she? She, 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 yeah. she committed to it, totally committed to it. Yeah. And she was always, you know, um, people would write to her and, and she was always sitting there writing letters back to people. And I yeah, remember, and, or bringing people around the close. And you'd see Gladys yeah. coming toward you. You might be going for lunch or where you go over. And, uh, you know, she'd be coming towards you with a gang of people. She'd say, oh, yeah, and, and here's Mickey who plays Sinbad. And so you go up and say hello, and they, they, they're always lovely people. And I remember she brought this, this uh, party of people in. We moved to Chilwall, everything. We moved lock, stock and barrel to the old Chilwall College where we had the parade and stuff. And there was a guy that used to write to us. Um, and he had a, 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 a particular name. Um, I can't think of it now, but um, he used to write, and he'd write all criticisms and put it be pages long and he'd write to you and he'd tell you where you were going wrong with your character or what you should do or what. And you couldn't help but read these. You'd be like, hang on, what's he saying? And I'm what? And I'm what? You know, and um, it was, it was well, a kind of... Chris something, I, Mickey. Chris, Chris, Chris. I, I can't Chris remember, but I remember Gladys... Or... Gladys yeah, Gladys brought some people in one day and they're coming along the corridor and she went, oh, hello, this is Mechanics. Oh, hello, you know, this, this guy said, I love that with that. And this is, uh, and then mentioned that guy's name and I went, and I, and I put my hand out to shake his hand and I went, oh, he's here, he's in, he's in, you know. And, uh, and I, I said to Gladys later, I said, oh, he's that fan. He said, oh, no, he, he sends me lovely letters. And he said, you know, he said, and it, it was actually all right. You know what I mean? It's probably just me. But I thought there's a stalker in. He's got in. He's in the, he's in the building. You know, get the fire extinguishers ready. The oh. funny thing is, though, Mickey, I was just about to say, we all escaped uh, being in Brookside. We escaped the social media time where that guy would have been... Yeah. All yeah. what he thought about him. Yeah, 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 yeah. In a way, I think that's, we were very lucky, you know. Really because right. It was quite hard to take, I think, and it just that's made true. me remember that. I was only thinking of it the other day that actually we didn't have social media then, did we? Whereas wow. everybody was a re everybody's a reviewer now. Yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Knows, well, I've yeah. Been, you know, and of course, yeah. actors do contrary to what people think that they kind of as you've just said you take it to heart so yeah oh yeah you do is you people say you know you you, you do you know you, you someone will come up and say something and you'll go oh, hang on a minute you, you have a stock set of answers if you think you're being someone's trying to have a go or something you need to, you know just to protect yourself you know what I mean but sometimes you know people can say the most cutting things and uh, you know I got a letter once and um I think I, I showed it to John one day but um, and it was reams long, and there was um, uh, from a woman um, um, who lived in the Midlands, and um, she was going on about the she loved Simbad and all this and all this. Yeah, okay. 
give me a life story. Yeah. And there was a picture of her home, which was absolutely palatial, if that was the place. Yeah. It was huge. And she was in the garden with a, a, a dog, you know, and she sort of photo taken this woman in a, a middle-aged woman. And there was a little arrow pointing to one end of the, the building. There was a little room and she had Sinbad's flat. She'd written on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh yeah, here we go, here we go. And, uh, and then it kind of, um, and I'm reading on because I'm a nosy bugger. Anyway, I'm reading. And she said, you know, she, her husband had passed away and left her all this money. And, you know, if um, a fancy <laughs> up and down, if it could be, uh, you know, yeah. I said, oh my god <laughs> how dare you and I, I mean I, I mean I went twice but it, I never I never no it was funny some of the stuff we used to get was was incredible you know um well a lot of it was funny and, and uh, you, you got I got behind me and I was terribly lazy for doing stuff like that I'd, I'd be getting people to send them off and then when we moved uh we, we moved house a couple of years ago and um we were checking, uh, my missus and I were checking out some stuff in the shed, and I found a lot of letters from people from like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I went, Oof. You yeah, need to do those. Might not even, you might, might not even be alive. Most of them were from the tax, I have to admit. But, uh, <laughs> there was also, along with that, there was a, a huge responsibility actually, because that reminds me that during the drug storyline, um, people would write to me and in a way that again was incredible and people actually um, thought that you know you were really living it and I remember once uh, a grandmother wrote to me and said it's it's really helping me because I'm going through this at the moment with my grandson mm -hmm. and I don't know just like you mm -hmm. how to, yeah. but she was talking it, it was to me it wasn't to it was to me as Jackie, do you know what I mean? And yeah. it's yeah, yeah. responsibility then yeah. because yeah. you, don't, you mm. have no right to give any advice because it's not your life, do you know what I mean? And do you have Yeah, to that's, say, that's where you can you come unstuck, you know, you, yeah, you're trying yeah. it out. I really okay. hope things yeah. work out for you, but other than that, mm -hmm. what can you say? It's not, you know, so it's mm -hmm. a twofold thing that some people are taking it so much to heart because it's their life. Yeah, you know? yeah. And they're not doing that separation, really. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, it, it, it is difficult because we're like the 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 Jordan storyline. Not to out storyline anybody, but no. But there was the same thing that that Sandra and uh, and it, uh, certainly um, I feel and even Tiff were getting letters, and I was getting letters from people saying, "Oh, you know, um, my brother's like you," or you know, and, and I um I, I got a, a letter one day from a little girl who said that. Um, as a sister was, you know, a big fan of Sinbad's, and she sent a pound in the um, the envelope. Oh. And said, "Would you ring her on her birthday?" Um, yeah. You know, and 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 you know, this is to pay for the call. Her birthday will be, you know, and um, and I thought it was such a sweet letter, you know. And, and anyway, on I showed it to my wife, and she said, "Oh well, are you sure?" And you know, you don't. You don't know what it is, but yeah, that'd be a nice thing. And I said, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to ring you up. And of course, the day of the birthday, I was happened to be a Saturday morning. And I, I rung up and this little girl answered the phone. I said, hey, and I said, I, I'm Michael Stark. I play Simba. But you asked me to share. Oh, and she was delighted, you know, and everything. And then, um, but it was a kind of a double-edged sword because there'd been a tragedy and I looked like her sister's boyfriend and kind of thing, you know, and, and I, I, I didn't know. Sort of way to ten. I could hear the little girl in the background going, "Don't, don't tell him that. Just, just he wants to just say happy birthday." And you know, but it was, but it, I mean, what it's it brings you close to people. I mean, you know, people do, you know, identify with you, and you know, like you say, there is a duty, you know, that, that you have sometimes, and a responsibility. You've got to remember, you know, as much as you can walk away from it and, you know, take the jacket off or you know whatever. You know, sometimes you, 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 you know, things do stay with you. And, um, yeah. you know, you're trying to do the right. As I say, we're not always at our best, are we? You know, yeah. I remember being in Alton Towers. We were filming at Alton Towers. And um, a, a woman came up to me and, and she asked me for a, an autograph. And I said, have you got a pen? And she went, oh. I said, oh, have you, have you got a pen? I mean, and she went, oh, oh, oh. And she ran away. <laughs> <laughs> what have I said? You know, I Trick know. question. <laughs> I think she, I think she must have had said something else to her, like "Go away from me, you come from hell." I don't. I, I, I just said I don't have a pen. I, I, 
and the poor woman, you know, kind of, but she must, years later, she must have, there he is. You know what he said to me, and I'll be towers. Yeah. I used to get job offers when Billy was out wow. of work. I used to get, uh, I know, my name's, I'm the managing director. This is a managing director, you know, not, not, he says, I work, I've got this big electrical company and if you're stuck for the job, I've got plenty of openings for sparks. <laughs> so <I'd> be, <laughs> and people used to try oh. and send money because of, I was always skint. Uh, so you get money and then I have to try and send it back or uh, you know, give it to Bill Dean. Oh, yeah. I don't know, you know. But, <laughs> 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 but it, it's funny all that, isn't it? You know, people yeah. would send you stuff for bit. I remember um, where the storyline where sitting my dad piles. You don't remember that another, one? Yeah, another envelope pushing storyline. Yeah, and um, I'll just think that one out for you. <laughs> yeah. But I, I remember walking around the shops, and a, a woman came out of a fruit shop with a little bag of fruit and said, "Have them. They'll do you the world of good. Get rid of your, get rid of your piles. <laughs> bag of fruit. Oh, no, that'll do me. Thank you." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a couple of free ladders as well um, over the years. Well, you nicked Barry's, didn't you? <laughs> well, we had his, yeah, but apparently that was worth about 500 quid, so that was the problem. <laughs> but I got an... Um, yeah. Who's is that? Oh, that's, 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 that's the producer. The producer's just come in. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was... Uh, I think I lost the nice dogs are barking now. Um, just the last question. It's a two-part question. It's actually from... You probably might remember, recognise the name, Lee Brady. Yeah. He runs the main Brookside uh, page, and he also did the Brookside oh, Memorable yeah. Moments. He was the one that put the yeah. petition together. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So his question is, are we? were you all happy with your leaving storylines, and would you go back if Brookside were ever to return? I'll uh, start with you, Sue. <laughs> oh, with me. Um, well, you know, Jackie's still alive. Um, so yeah. I guess I, I'm like every other actor that would say kind of, I think we've all said never say never. But the only thing I would say is I'd rather do it before we're all on Zimmer frames. So <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, right. be kind of nice to do it uh, a little bit sooner. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's always sad to leave anything that's long running. I hate change. I'm not good with change. So leaving anything is, I mean, leaving a house, I'm hopeful. You know, I'm hopeless when you, you're buying another house with it. So leaving is always very sad. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I, I, I think the one thing I always balked at a little bit, it was after I left, that they said Jackie had remarried. And, and I just thought, no, nah, no. Nah, not nah. that quickly. No. Not at no. all. She was a one man woman. And, um, and, and that was my only sadness. So it's a kind of sadness um, that, that somebody, probably Paul Marquis, had thought to do that. Mm. Uh, I thought that was a little bit of a shame because that showed that they didn't, somebody didn't really know her. Um, yes. You know. Yeah. Like yourself. But, but actually, uh, you know, leaving is always sad, I think, but sometimes it's just the right time. It's just yeah. the right yeah, yeah. You know it in your heart when it's time to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, what about you, John? Me, I, I was very disappointed in my leaving storyline because we drove to Basingstoke. <laughs> oh yes, you were I mean, <laughs> yes. You're still there, there happily ever after 30 years later. <laughs> I know. When Phil, uh, when I told Phil I was leaving and everything, and he said, oh, right, oh, fair enough. This is before Sue had said anything. And he went, uh, right, but well, how would you like to go? I said, well, why don't you just kill me? And he <laughs> went, how? Oh, I said, really don't go on anything. Just get rid of me. Get, you know, clean me out. I've got to, you know, otherwise I'll be tempted to come back. And I yeah, really want to try them. and make, it, make the break. Anyway, three weeks before we, we, uh, we were leaving, he called me back into the office and he went, I'm going against your wishes. I said, why? He said, I'm not going to kill you off. He said, because you might need us one day. And he was probably right. <laughs> he was probably right. Uh, so he decided not to. But I was disappointed. And on the, on the answer, you know, to uh, would I come back if they did it again? It would probably be no, because I'd, I'd, I wouldn't mind Brookside coming back. But I wouldn't like to be part of it. I think it should be like a new cast, new people and everything like that. Maybe the odd 
come back for the odd appearance, but I think uh, it should start with a clean slate myself. That's yeah. just me. Yeah, because you know, I've had my time. I had my time there. I enjoyed it. And I, I loved it. And I think that you know, if they were going to bring it back, they would have to write completely whole new characters and everything, wouldn't they? And time new location, again. of course, with the houses yeah. all not being occupied now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it wouldn't be Brookside Close anymore. The proper one. No. But no, I enjoyed it, and you know, that's that's my you know that's my feelings. Great, uh, Lewis. Yeah, I was uh, I was very happy with uh, with my leaving story. Um, it got to the point where Mick had kind of pushed everybody away. I mean, uh, Josie come back and take and Gemma. Um, Leo had decided, you know, he didn't want to live with his dad anymore. You know, it all all the thing that happened with Suzanne. Um, Suzanne Farnham. So we got very bitter, and um, it was. Uh, I, I went to Phil asked to see me when I said that I was I was leaving, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm getting the old uh, cold shoulder, just leaving in a taxi or something like that, or won't even be <laughs> on screen or whatever. But um, but he was great, and um, and he said he asked me, he said, is there anything that you you would have liked to have done or whatever like that? And I think a couple of the times. We there'd been a couple of two handers. I think Dino was in one. I think they, I think they had Jimmy. Was it with was it with you, Sue? There was a couple of little two handers dotted around various episodes where yeah. there was just the two characters involved. Mm. And uh, I said, Oh, I would have loved one of them. I said, because all the actors, all the actors love that. You know what I mean? You, you feel great for the other actors, but you'd have liked a little piece of that yourself. And he just did his little nod like that. And then when I got the scripts. It was the it was the penultimate script actually, and it was a it was a two hand and it was Mick and Jimmy, uh, written by the lovely Peter Cox, who I always felt he wrote good beautifully mm. for my character anyway, yeah. And um, yeah. and it was a beautiful episode and it was it was Jimmy kind of basically telling Mick, look, you know, it's not quite the end of the world, but you know, like still you got to do this and put him on right track without it being syrupy and all like that, and Jimmy drawn on his own experience. And it was two characters that never really had a lot to do with each other. I mean, Jimmy did come and work in the pizza parlor, but we weren't uh, soulmates like, say, Mick and Sinbad. But I think that's why it worked. You know what I mean? Because yeah. because of that. And, you know, here was this guy from across the close telling me, giving me his wisdom and parting like that. I'm making him kind of see some kind of sense and thinking, well, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm getting it with Mick going down. I think uh, Leo had gone down to Torquay and joined the police down there and he was like, well look, go and find him and try and make amends. But it was it was it was beautifully done and, and so to transgress I was very happy with that. Would I go back? I'm kind of agreeing with Maka there that I think, you know, there's a whole new Liverpool now since since Brookie went. So there's, yeah. there's, there's a whole new vibe, there's a whole new lot of stories, a whole new set of young people. And I think It'd be great to come back at Brookside, but with a whole new faces, yeah. the whole new vibe, the whole new different story that you'd be telling now. And yeah, you know, if they wanted to bring, what you know, the odd sort of cameo, but yeah, new. new but not new, as a regular. No, no, no. I, like I, I don't think it needs to. I, I think, I think what I find is, I think it's it. Yes, we kind of left the legacy, but it's kind of sad if that's that's the only legacy we have with the likes of us. Because there's there's millions of you know there's a thousand other actors out there and talent that we've got in Liverpool that mm. let let's show them yeah you know what I mean not just be, not just be saying well and it's lovely that people say to us now I wish they'd bring it back of course it's nice that but there's a whole new generation of mm. talent that we've got that could be seen now we yeah. we kind of had our time and we do other stuff I wouldn't say no to like a cameo but let's have fresh blood in there and the showcase. Just- the new generation. Yeah. We've got in this picture, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fair enough. And Michael, your, your Sinbad's leaving storyline, he went off with a family, he did sort of have a happy ending, didn't he? Yeah, well, he he, he um, went off with Barbara, played by my old mate, Polly Hyten, and uh, it was great to work with him. And the two boys, he'd had a, a very contentious storyline, which kind of didn't go anywhere. And I, I, I didn't like it because I felt... It went against the character and everything you know you put into the character and and um to, to have a, a producer come along one day and just sort of 
use your character to facilitate a storyline to be a little bit kind of uh, controversial, I felt was a bit insulting. Having yeah. said that, I'd already decided to leave, mm -hmm. um, but Phil could be persuasive, you know, and um, and I thought, well, I'll, I'll go and talk to Phil. I decided to leave only people that knew her, my wife and I. And um, anyway, I, I, I asked to see him, but in the interim, the, uh, the producer at the time called me in and said, look, he'd been in the job six months. He, he asked for people to leave him, give him some time and he would call us in. So he did. And he said, right, we're going to go this, this uh, and here. And I, I felt it was very dangerous. I said I could do it, but I said it has to be treated properly. Yeah. And, you know, everybody has to understand, you know. Um, but he didn't seem to know. It was very um, organic, if I can use that word. And so I thought, if this could go any way, this, and if it's not looked after, I'm the one that goes and picks my kids up from school and, you know, all this kind of stuff, which is fine. Actors have to do that. But um, it didn't, it, it kind of fizzled out anyway. But Phil always said, um, when a, a main character leaves, his duty is to the programme. So he's torn between giving them a lovely, you know, leaving episode and, and getting the audience and the viewers to kind of dislike the character and sort of think, well, by the time you go, they're glad to see the back here. So yeah, it, it doesn't you. have a detrimental impact yeah. on the show. Um, so, yeah, I understood that. But I, my, my, it fizzled out and we left and it was an end of part one. You know, because it wasn't even the end of episode. And I thought, well, that was a key, big wasn't it? crummy. Sorry? It was quite low key, the story. I would have liked Sinbad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it did. It just fizzled out because I said I was leaving. Um, yeah. it, it couldn't really go anywhere anyway. But, no. um, you know, but as I say, when people talk about, um, about it coming back and, you know, they do, I, I agree with you guys. I mean, you know, in this, you know, I've always felt we're lucky to be working anyway. And yes. in our game, it has always been precarious, you know, and, and such are the times now. It's it's so difficult. And, you know, so many young people who left drama school, so many theatres are closed. People who are away, all the jobs have gone and they and they've not just gone, they've disappeared. It's 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 just it's just so tragic what's happened in our business. And and if if it did ever come back, I mean I always think Brookie was of its time mm -hmm. and something else should come back. What if it was Brookside and the close? a whole new batch of actors. Because like Lewis and the guys were saying, there are so many out there who haven't had a shot. Give them a shot. There's so many young, new, brilliant actors, and even actors our age, who, who you know have been knocking around and, and jobbing for years, and they have got so much to show. Let them do it. We've had our time. We were mm -hmm. very lucky. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so let other, you know, let it. And because and, God knows, you know, whatever's going to happen, with the world, you know, without getting yeah. too sort of heavy about things. But our business has suffered as much as anybody. And of course, it was yeah. one of the first. It was my, my own family, my daughters are in the business and they had work lined up. My wife was on tour, um, everything just stopped. And yeah. we don't get anything. We don't, you know, we, we, um, we kind of just hope in the phone will ring, which is what we normally do anyway. But um, I, guess, I guess we're luckier than most. Uh, and, you know, I, I, we've got a lot to be thankful for. But, you know, anyone comes yeah. back, if Brookie comes back, a whole new cast. Yeah. That's fair enough. OK. If, if, my that... battery, if, if, if I just disappear, it's because my battery's gone. OK, I haven't just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to wrap up there anyway. I didn't realise we'd actually been on for a... <laughs> was, that, was that your pacemaker? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna, we'll wrap up now, John, because it was been an hour and a half. I didn't, Sue, you were right. It's gone really, really quick. I was thinking 40 minutes at first. It's a good job I did get that extension on Facebook, isn't it? So I could actually <laughs> run the video longer than 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's, honestly, it's, it's been, been, been great talking to you. Yeah, well done, oh, well done, really, well, we finally made it as well because after last week I was I just thought oh that's it they won't want us <laughs> they'll, they'll cancel on me now <laughs> so we finally done it we oh, nice great to see everyone just great to see, oh, to see the guys Smith says hello he played Gizmo yeah oh Rob yeah Robbie yeah, yeah. I'm just oh, Robbie all the time yeah, yeah. yeah he's my next interview. Oh, oh, he's really? a great character. Oh, really? uh, Talk about knowing his lines and hitting his mark. He was one of the 
brilliant Robbie Smith. What a fabulous yeah. character yeah. he was. Well, there are a few other th people I'm hoping to ask. Um, Justine Kerrigan, no pressure if you want. Oh, Claire Sweeney. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Mark Burgess, Gabrielle Glaister. I know these are all on Twitter, so I'm going to approach them all one by one. I could do a little series here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can. Just let's hope it doesn't go all kaput on me like last time. <laughs> oh, you've got it sussed. You've done it now. I've done it sussed. <laughs> Teething problems here, and that's all, mate. Teething Thanks. problems. Yeah. If I, I wasn't saying that last week, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I got the text. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had it, like I said, you had a kip in between, you know. Oh, well, I've got to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. And it's been really yeah. nice to see everyone. Yeah, it's, it's lovely, lovely seeing lovely. you. So, yeah, what yeah, I should lovely. do now is I shall download the video yeah. and upload it to everybody that didn't get to see it live. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, brilliant. Oh, lovely to oh, see you all lovely. again, guys. See you all yeah, again. I shall send you the clips oh, tomorrow. Yo, yeah. Good night, all, and have a lovely day. Lovely to speak good to you. Good night, guys. See you all the time. I've got to work out how you turn it off now. Sorry, how do you, you turn it off? switch is off, Ian. I don't even know yeah. how you turn it off. <laughs> right, get the drink out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, right I've got an assistant, so we'll say good night. Good night, guys. Good night, I'll speak to you very soon. Good night. Good night. Oh, we're not off yet. It's the night. Bye, John, boys.